Hi, my name is Peter and I'd like to introduce you to our fifth generation industrial weld inspection system. Now this system uses um, ultrasound guided wave technology and importantly we use an electromagnetic technique known as EMAT. Now there's plenty of information about EMAT elsewhere on our website so I won't go into the details about that. However, for the sake of this application only, I'd like to just point out three important characteristics. Firstly, EMAT is a coupland free ultrasound technique. Secondly, it is generally considered a non-contact technique. And thirdly, it is suitable for high-speed inspection. Um, so in the case of weld inspection, um, we do this at up to one meter per second. Overall, EMAT is a very, very applicable technique to industrial environments. And it's very easy to integrate our EMAT sensors um, even in as, as retrofits on existing lines. Our weld insp uh, inspection system is typically used for laser weld inspection, uh, mostly for automotive applications such as what I have here, which is a, a Taylor welder blank. In general, the same technique, the same technology is applicable to many different industrial seam welding processes, such as um, flash butt welding or even mash welding. However, our only criteria is that the weld profile needs to be relatively smooth, without too much root and without too much cramp. Um, so in the case also of, of mash welds, um, we need to make sure that the overlap zone is well planished. Just before giving you a demonstration, um, I'd like you to I'd like to introduce you to some hardware. Um, so this over here is the sensor that we use in our industrial weld inspection system. Um, and it's a very robust sensor. And you have to think that this has to be positioned on the material immediately adjacent to the weld seam. So it doesn't travel directly on the weld seam, it goes adjacent to the weld seam. You can see here that the sensor contains some, some wheels and also it has some compliance, um, a spring unit in order to give it some compliance. Now we have various options of how to integrate this sensor and also a range of other sensors that we have into different types of processes. And we have some separate videos which outline some of these methods. Okay, what I'm going to do now is a quick demonstration of an actual inspection. Um, here in our laboratory, we've got a motorized gantry, which means I'm actually going to move the sensor over a Taylor welder blank. Now, this Taylor welder blank that I've got here has already been prepared with some artificial defects. Um, in this case, I've got a, a small 0.5 millimeter hole and also a top notch and a lower notch. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to see those in the scan. Um, which you will see on this monitor up here, which is not the normal place for the monitor. Normally the monitor would be in here, but I've just put it up here for the sake of this demonstration. Um, so I'm going to get the gantry moving. Um, what you will hear, first of all, is a sound. Now this sound is actually the sound of the electromagnets. We use a pulsed electromagnet, which attracts the Taylor welder blank, in this case, or whatever steel that you're inspecting, to the, to the sensor and it's pulsed, which means it's switched on and off several times per second. So you'll actually hear this um, with, a, with a set frequency. I'm going to get this moving right now. Okay, here's the view in the system screen showing the results from that last inspection that we just did. In the top part of the screen, we see a graph with the various signal traces, which are used to determine the quality of the weld and to give an overall pass or fail criteria for the weld that we just inspected. Um, the x-axis of the graph represents the linear position on the weld of the measured signal. You can see that in this case, it goes from zero on one side to 128 millimeters on this side over here. Um, now, this implies that the length of the weld was 128 millimeters. Um, you can see that the weld has been designated with a fail up here in this side over here. Um, and this is because the measured signals have passed some pre-established thresholds to determine that that weld um, has got a, a lower than expected weld quality. There are two traces that are being represented here. Um, you will recall that I mentioned earlier on that we use different channels that are sensitive to different types of defects. Now, the green signal here um, this represents what we call the planar channel. And this is a function of the ultrasound reflection from the weld when we channel ultrasound directly at the weld. Um, and what this basically means is that we have a constant baseline reflection from the weld. That's this line over here. Now you can see that the actual baseline reflection from the weld has an amplitude of around about seven to eight, um, 
percent. Now this is just a, an arbitrary value here, um, but that's the, the the baseline reflection from the weld. Um, the, the reflection increases when there are weld floors, as you can see in these peaks over here. As you can see there are a number of peaks on the green line. Um, the red signal, on the other, other hand, represents the point channel. Now, this is a very sensitive channel that is designed to be not influenced by the own reflection of the weld, which you can see here um, in the very low baseline. That's this line over here. You can see it's, it hovers around about 0 to 1%. Um, now, because it has such a low baseline, this channel can be used to detect very, very small defects like porosity and pinholes. Now, the well seam that's shown here um, actually has four defects. Um, first of all, there was a 0.5 millimeter hole in this area over here. Um, secondly, there was a top notch, um, which had a length of about five millimeters as well. Um, there was a, a notch on the lower side as well, which again had a length of about five millimeters. And lastly, there was another 0.5 millimeter hole over here. And each one of these defects has caused some form of reflection from the weld. Now, the signals from these defects have gone above the so-called thresholds. The thresholds are these horizontal lines here, the green and the red. There's a different threshold for each of the channels. And because the signals have passed these thresholds, um, this has determined that the weld has failed in its criteria.